So we're going through a little experiment right now, particularly in states and uh, local localities that, uh, that, that have adopted a, let's call it soft policing stance, particularly on property crimes. If you remember during the dark days of the summer of 2020, as the Black Lives Matter uh, demonstrations, many of them turned into riots, and some of those riots, in particular, I remember the case in Chicago, turned into out-and-out -out looting. Uh, if you remember, the, the large mobs uh, looted stores on the Miracle Mile, uh, that's Michigan Avenue in Chicago, stole, from, uh, stole large quantities of goods from places like, uh, from luxury goods like Louis Vuitton and other places. And, um, and Black Lives Matter the next day, I remember, I held a demonstration outside the courthouse uh, demanding that whoever was arrested be released, that this wasn't, uh, this wasn't uh, a crime, shouldn't be viewed as a crime. This was just an attempt to reduce inequality in the culture. That this was just a, a form of redistribution of wealth. The, the fact that they stole Louis Vuitton bags would be an opportunity for them to sell those bags, get a little bit of money. And who, hey, many commentators on the left said, what's the big deal? All these stores have insurance. Why is anybody upset? Uh, you, you know, insurance companies are evil and large and, and, and bad guys. And, uh, you know, these are luxury stores and only the rich care about these places and the rich be damned. And everybody thinks income inequality is a bad thing. So this is just a little action to reduce income inequality. When stores were damaged and destroyed in Portland, Oregon during those same, uh, during riots under the guise of the same cause, nobody cared. Nobody cared. It was the attack on the federal building that got Trump all excited. But smash stores, destroy property, nobody seemed to care anyway. And of course, this was a phenomenon all over the United States, even in Minneapolis, um, uh, where, of course, the, the, the BLM uh, demonstration started after the George Floyd killing. Even in Minneapolis, when they burnt their own people's stores, when they burnt stores in their own neighborhoods, well, they're just expressing themselves. It's a form of expression. At the time, if you remember, the, the, the theme was defund the police or even better, abolish the police. Let's get rid of the police. And I did a whole show on how it was Rousseau's idea that indeed it is civilization and its institutions, including the police, which is part of the institutions of civilization. It is civilization that causes crime. That man, in a, in a sense, in a state of nature, without the institutions of civilization, without reason, science, right, without the constraints of morality, man is violence-free. That is heaven. That is beauty. What corrupts man is his mind, its reason. What corrupts man is capitalism. What corrupt man corrupts man are the institutions of civilization. What corrupts man is the law, property rights. If only we could abolish property rights, if only we could abolish the police, everything would be in a state of nature, would be peaceful and wonderful. That is directly out of Rousseau. And of course, we know that Rousseau's ideas inspired the most monstrous of, uh, of, of the, the, the uh, uh, executioners of the French Revolution, the, the most bloodthirsty participants in the French Revolution were carried with them everywhere they went. Robespierre, for example, copies of Rousseau's books. So there was a whole movement about defunding the police, and getting rid of the police. Now, a lot of that didn't go anywhere, although a lot of defunding happened. Nobody got rid of the police, even in Minneapolis, when they actually took it to a vote with the people. They voted it down just this last month. 
But the mentality of soft property crimes don't matter. Uh, it's re just redistribution. Who cares? It's just luxury stores. No big deal. That mentality survived and indeed got institutionalized in some areas with, with district attorneys that believed this stuff, that internalized these Age this agenda. Indeed, they were voted in advocating for this agenda. Agenda of, again, uh, no bail, uh, let's release criminals early, property crimes are not real crimes, and the police, the police are the enemy. The police are the enemy. They are the problem from which, for which we need to find a solution. Well, We've seen over the last year and a half now a significant increase in crime. We've seen an increase in violent crime, uh, an increase in spite of the fact that for since 1991, I think it is, violent crime has seen an historic, unprecedented decline from 1991 until about 2018, a dramatic decline in, de in, in murder, in property crimes, in battery, in all forms of violent crimes and property rights, we saw a dramatic, particularly in murder, dramatic decline. In spite of Donald Trump's claim in 2016 that we had, you know, that there was, uh, what was it? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, bloodshed everywhere and, and, uh, and uh, our, our streets and cities were riddled with crime. That 2016 was very close to the, the, some of the most um, peaceful, uh, devout of criminality periods in American history. But that is starting to reverse itself. Crime is definitely on the uptick, unsurprisingly, since we started to talk about how property crime are no big deal, how we don't need the police, how we could do we could do really really well with fewer police don't need a lot of police murder has been a, a significant uptick but generally crime has seen a significant uptick and you can see it over the last few weeks uh, really over the last week in what has been going on just a few examples right so you remember reading that story about this guy who drove his truck through a Christmas parade. I think he killed six injured dozens. Some of those injured might still die. A guy who has behaved like this in the past, who has shown homicidal tendencies, and he was out on bail. A thousand dollar bail. Now you think maybe a thousand dollar bail, it may have been a victimless crime, Maybe he was caught with possession of some drug. Maybe he was drunk or, or whatever. No. He was out on bail when he ran down these dozens of people. A thousand dollar bail for running over the mother of his child. I mean, this is a guy who was using his car as a weapon and had in the past. And for running over his girlfriend in the past or whatever, the, the mother of his child. He was given a thousand dollar bail and released. A thousand dollars. And then, shh, this, and this is like, this is not, like that was not some freak thing. This guy's been in trouble with the law over and over and over again. And surprise, surprise, he goes on and commits another heinous crime, this time with many victims, unrelated. Now, this happened in a county with a district attorney who is a real progressive, who believes criminals should get a second chance and we shouldn't penalize poor criminals with high bail and we should let them all loose. And we're seeing the same thing in LA, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Minneapolis, but this, this was in a Milwaukee county. And the consequence is, shockingly, rising crime. 
thousand dollar bail for running over a woman. Purposefully, not accidentally, purposefully. In other words, attempted murder, thousand dollar bail. It's mind boggling. Why would somebody like this be allowed out on bail at all? A um, headline in, um, in the Washington Post described this event where six people have died, including an eight-year-old boy, and, and as I said, dozens were injured. This is the headline. The what, I'm going to butcher the name, I apologize, of the county in, of the city in Milwaukee, in, in, uh, in Wisconsin. The Waukesha tragedy caused by a SUV. I, I, you know, what, do you, what can you do but laugh? First of all, it's not a tragedy. Tragedy is like st stuff happens. This is like murder. This is like a massive crime. And the SUV didn't do it. I mean, it's one thing to say, Gun violence, as if guns are violent, right? Because guns are, you know, a, 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 a tool of violence. That's what they are. Okay, right? Still, somebody had to pull the trigger. But SUVs are now, it's not the person. God forbid we blame anybody because, you know, they're just products of their genes or products of their environment. You know, they, they, they can't help themselves. They just are what they are. It's probably systemic racism in one way or another, or systemic poverty, or systemic neglect, or systemically unloved, or whatever systemic thing caused this SUV to do it. I mean, I wonder if the SUV, what color SUV was. Maybe the SUV was like a, a maybe it was orange or something, some horrible color, and, and people insulted it, and it was feeling insulted, so it decided to run a bunch of people over. Now, as it happened, the guy who actually ran over the people, the guy who ran over his mother of his child, uh, the guy who got out on bail for a thousand dollars, it looks like he's a fan of Adolf Hitler. I mean, one article. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, suggest that uh, in the New York Post. Uh, Dow Brooks shed pro-Hitler memes called for violence against white people. That's interesting that you're both pro-Hitler and anti-white people. You know, I, I, go, go figure this out. Go figure all this out. It doesn't matter. The guy is a nut, a violent nut, should have never, ever, ever been allowed out on bail. Yeah, he was, he, he was uh, big on, on, on killing Jews. Those are the kind of white people he really wanted to kill, uh, was Jews, right? Anti, anti-cops. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this, this guy was a piece of work. Real piece of work. But it's not his fault. It's the SUV did it. The orange SUV. Maybe it wasn't orange. I don't know. You're seeing a pattern. But then... Over the last few days, seemingly out of nowhere, it looks like a bunch of people looked at the video of what happened in Chicago last summer, noticed that what happened there is it was a large group of people rushed in, stole a bunch of stuff, rushed out, got in their cars, drove away. Almost nobody was arrested. The ones who were arrested were released with a slap on the wrist because BLM advocated for their cause. Somebody sat down and figured out, huh, I wonder if we can replicate that. All right, so I'm, I'm being corrected. It wasn't orange. It was red. Okay. Well, if it was red, that makes sense. You'd expect that of a red SUV, right? I'm trying to be funny here. I don't know if it's working. But you'd expect that of a red SUV. You know. Uh, you know. Not of a different color SUV. Maybe a red SUV. Anyway, it's as if somebody sat down and figured out, huh, I wonder if we can replicate what happened in Chicago and get away with it. And indeed, 
if we replicate it, what's the big deal? If we can get enough people to run into a store all at once, grab as much stuff as we can, run outside, get in our cars, and drive away, what are the police going to do? If there's so many of us, how are they going to catch us? If there's so many of us, what, are they going to start shooting? They're not going to shoot us because we know what happens if the police shoot. And the security guards are not going to shoot us. They're too afraid to shoot. So we can beat up the security guards, grab as much Louis Vuitton or, or, or Best Buy stuff as we can, run into the car, get out of there. And what you're seeing across California, it started in San Francisco, but across California, is flash mobs. You remember the flash mobs where they start dancing or they start playing music or they start singing and it's really, really cool and really, really beautiful? Well, now these flash mobs, obviously well orchestrated, well planned, well thought in advance, are burglarizing store after store after store in California. Start in San Francisco. San Francisco that has a district attorney that basically is not prosecuting uh, uh, shoplifting. Stores have closed in San Francisco. The first store in which they came in, robbed, and escaped was at Louis Vuitton in, um, in Union Square. They've now done it at Best Buy and other luxury stores. This has now spread to Minneapolis, another one of these district attorneys that are very, very soft on property crimes. And there's no end in sight. Some of these uh, mobs are not just attacking the stores, but if there are people around there with shopping bags or, or bags, they're grabbing the shopping bags, bra uh, grabbing people's wallets and running away. Some of them are armed, some of them are not. But they basically, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, a, a one uh, flash mob took on a Home Depot and they went in and they got sledgehammers and all kinds of equipment so that they could go, I guess, and rob the Best Buy and smash the windows and grab the stuff. And, I mean, looking at my news feed, it's like this is everywhere. For at least a decade now, we have told poor people over and over again that they are victims of the system, that they are poor not for any fault of their own, but because the system makes them poor. The system, by the way, is capitalism. And that the way that manifests itself is through inequality. That inequality was a way in which, nobody ever explains how this works, but it's a way in which the rich, the wealthy, the establishment, the successful, have oppressed the poor and kept them down. This has been a popular suggestion, a popular storyline of the left that has been picked up since Trump by the right, and has become now just something that everybody accepts. The working class, the, the, whether it's white working class, uh, rural working class, whether it's inner city working class, the working class is being screwed by the rest, by the so-called elites. And whether you're right or left, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that you're working class. And the rich don't deserve what they have. It's all at your expense. Whatever they have, they've stolen from you. They don't deserve it. It's not theirs. On top of that, the left for the last, certainly for the last four or five years, has been aggressively advocating the, 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 the far left, an anti-property rights perspective. What is socialism after all? What is Bernie Sanders after all? if not a hater of property rights. When politicians float the idea of having wealth taxes, taxes on unearned capital gains, 
increasing taxes on the wealthy. Everybody knows what that means. That means stealing stuff to redistribute. And then when riots happened last summer, and nobody really condemned them, and when vandalism and burning of stores and explicit straight out looting happened, nobody objected. The states, governments, cities didn't do much to stop it. Federal government didn't do much. Again, federal government deployed forces only to protect the federal building. Did nothing. What is the message that's being sent to people? Property rights don't matter. Rich don't deserve what they have. After all, it's just a way of redistributing wealth, theft. When people who shoplift are not prosecuted, so if you steal a little bit, then it's okay, but if I steal a lot, it's not okay. What's a lot? What's a little? Isn't it the case that if I can get away with it, it's okay? When the left and right advocate for nihilism, for not caring about values, for no respect for human life or property, then people learn the lesson. They internalize it. At least the people at the margins. Oh, so we just need to figure out how to do it. When the police are deemed impotent, when the police in indeed are told to stand down, when people can riot in places like Kennesaw, burns people down, and the police are told not to intervene, then what the hell, let's start a riot, and then we'll steal stuff on the side. What all these ideas, what the nihilism, the hatred, the wanting to see the world burn by certain intellectuals, who of course tell the looters that it's not their fault. Indeed, they are the victims. They're only doing it as a sign of protest against systemic fill in the blank. Systemic discrimination, systemic racism, systemic exploitation. When people tell them that the jobs they have are slavery, are no different than slavery, then they live in a slave society. And it's time to rise up against the slave owners. All the messages people are getting, have been getting over the last year and a half, have been that the rule of law is unjust and that they should just go implicitly, just go and take what they want. And that's what they're doing. And they figured it out. We'll see how far this spreads around the country. So far, as I said, most of the stories I've seen are in California, where we have very soft attorney generals. I doubt you'll see this in Orange County, in California, but you'll see it in LA County. You'll see it in San Francisco. And you'll see it in places like Minnesota, Minneapolis. This is anarchy. This is what happens when there's no respect for the rule of law, when the police are shackled, when you have no police, or that they're not allowed to do their job. This is what happens when we let criminals out with no punishment. This is what happens when you throw in the towel. And yeah, it's not a consequence of the last um, year and a half. It's just the last year and a half, it's become explicit. Yeah, it's a trend that's been happening for 100 years. As we have eroded any respect for individual rights, as we've eroded any respect for individual sovereignty, as we've eroded any respect for individual agency, as we've attributed all actions to genes and environment and we're all just automatons, 
And yeah, we go up and down in the 70s was particularly bad. 80s and 90s were at least, uh, starting in the 90s, crime declined significantly. Trump signed a massive federal prisoner release bill. Yeah, one of the few things that Trump did that was very good because the kind of people he released was drugs, and that's, that's great. Instead of devoting police resources to protecting Louis Vuitton and to protecting Best Buy, let's go pick up those kids who might be shooting up some heroin or might be smoking some marijuana. Victimless crimes. Or victim is themselves. Why are we, I mean, the, the, illegal, the laws against illegal drugs are completely perverting and distorting all of this. But this is the consequence of leftist, anti-capitalist, um, anti-individualist ideas that have now infiltrated every aspect of our lives and infiltrated both left and right so they're no longer just leftist ideas. This is the consequence of, of Kant and Hegel and Marx and the postmodernists and the nationalists and all of them. Or as Stephanie says, of the consequence of the government regulating so much that you can't even sell lemonade without a license. This is what happens. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.